It's a consumer showing little signs of slowing down despite higher inflation and rising rates, and that could make the Fed get, well, more aggressive. Steve Leisman joins us now with more on that. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Yeah, economists keep looking for what they think they have to see, some sign of consumer weakness from higher energy prices and rising rates. But it's very hard to find, meaning the Fed has something of a brewing consumer problem here. Peter McRory, uh, who crunches the J.P. Morgan credit card data, tells me, quote, strong balance sheets and pent-up savings from the pandemic have consumers well-positioned to endure higher prices and interest rates. And the labor market continues to be very strong. Entertainment and travel in that credit card data, they've been two standout sectors. And gas prices and spending, though high, are down off their early March peak. The increase in gas spending, this is important, it's below the increase in gas prices. That suggests some economizing on the part of consumers. Housing, you heard Diana Olick early this morning, it's shown some interest rate related weakness and there could be more to come. But long-standing supply constraints in housing, well, they raise questions about just how much it will decline. Autos, the other leading interest rate sensitive sector, it suffers from supply problems, so there may not be much weakness there as it rebounds from these really artificial lows we have. Uh, Aneta Markowska at Jeffries in a piece where they up their call for Fed rate hikes, writing, this underlying resiliency of the consumer means the Fed will have to be even more aggressive in order to dampen demand and ultimately slow inflation. Jeffries now saying the funds rate will peak at 4%. At some point, the Fed is going to need to get the consumer's attention, Andrew. Hey, Steve, you know, what are some of the data points at this point that you think we're going to hear about next week that may give us an actual read here on the consumer that will impact that decision? Yeah, I mean, we, we keep following the high frequency data and looking for it there. You may remember, Andrew, this is my second report where I kept where I was looking for it, didn't find it. We'll get personal income and spending this Friday. We'll look to that. Next week, there's a bunch of consumer names that report. Uh, Robert Hum, uh, our, our, our earnings maven, is particularly interested in things like Starbucks, Shake Shack, Marriott. Some of these uh, consumer-facing names that may give us a sense of not just, you know, are consumers meeting the higher prices, but are they going further? That's really what the interesting thing is. It's one thing to just keep pace with inflation, but it looks so far like consumers are keeping pace with inflation and still finding a way to spend more. And that may have to do more uh, with the other thing we want to watch very carefully, Andrew, which is jobs. We have, a, you know, the jobless claims numbers have been very low. We get another round of that tomorrow morning. And then, of course, we're pointing towards next week's uh, jobs report, where it looks like people are still looking for that unemployment rate to continue to decline.